Hi guys, I'm Jiao Yin Summers. Welcome to Tiger Milk Podcast. When did you really feel like you came to really embrace your sexuality? So I was a little bit of a late bloomer with having sex. I don't know what what ex- I feel like maybe my high school was a little early on that. Like I remember in like seventh grade, this like eighth grader was pregnant. I was like, what? That's crazy. You know, like it was kind of and people were having sex at like 14, 15. And I didn't have sex until I right after I turned 18. So right after I oh my graduated God. high I had school. Sex when I'm 20. Yeah. Me I too, lost 18. I lost everything. So I and then I feel like I really needed to make up for lost time. And then I yeah. was like a huge slut, like in college and just really I felt like I went to I went to school in the South and I was from I'm from Delaware originally, but just a more northern upbringing. So I almost felt like I it made me want to like talk about sex more because people are a little bit more repressed, like mm-hmm. I don't know if repressed is the word, but just more conservative about that kind of stuff. And so I feel like all that kind of ties together and what I felt was like made me funny and made people like me and made me kind of like have that shock value. And I was like always super outgoing and um, like the funny friend and stuff like that. So sex just kind of being open about it was always something that I have been, I guess, since I started doing it and then even more so. And then um, like even when I used to live in Atlanta, this was like in my 20s, I would always have these sex toy parties around every Valentine's Day, like the old school pure romance parties. Like this lady would come and it was like, you know, like one of those, she would bring all these toys and we would buy them and stuff like that. So I was always really into like sex toys, masturbation, things like that. And then um, me and my co-host on our podcast and business partner, we started our own sex toy line uh, last year. That's amazing. So yeah, I just think like, I, I understand. I've just been really lucky to have parents that are really cool and open and not over the top sex positive. Like I think there's too, a far spectrum of like the way that families talk about sex. Like my family's like good, healthy, sex positive, but not like, you know, talking about it at the dinner table, like mom and dad having sex, you know, the night before. So it was kind of always something I felt comfortable being really open about. And now even more so with what I do for a living, I feel like we are, my parents even like kind of like joke around a little bit more, but I feel for people that grew up with like, A, you know, stuff that's not real about like masturbation. Like it'll make you uglier. It'll make you blind or like whatever it is. So you like think it's bad or like sex is bad or sex is not. And you shouldn't do it until you're married. And like all those things that kind of mold you. And so you're like scared to talk about it or whatever it is. Like, I just think we should always be talking about it. It's like something everybody does. It's funny. It's awkward. (laughs) Everybody has stories. Like I- I It's so healthy and empowering. And that's like why our podcast has gotten so popular. People are like, I never knew I could like talk about this or, you know, I felt so uncomfortable or weird or shy. And so I just think the more we talk about, the better. It's so good because uh, I, I can feel like as an Asian American woman, it's like a first generation, first generation immigrant. It's mm-hmm. so hard. I remember like I'm standing in front of the mirror and after my period, she's like, okay, it's time to talk about it. She's like, okay, look at yourself in the mirror. Do you like what you see? I'm like, no. She's like, good. We don't have to update your <laughs> prescription of your glasses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you touch yourself, you're going to look worse than this. I'm like, how much be- How much worse? She goes, your cousin Lily. I'm like, oh, <gasps> She like, referenced another family member. Yeah, I'm like, ew. She's like, it can get worse. I'm like, I'll never touch myself. She goes, that's good. Okay, nobody else can touch you either. I'm like, what happens? Like, <laughs> your cousin, Lily's brother, you know, I'm like, I just say his name. She's like, I can't say his name. I'm the one polluted polluted my mouth with that name. He's ugly. I mean, he's ugly. He's still ugly. Yeah. We're starting to go find me for Lily. <laughs> yeah. Is Lily listening? I, yeah. Lily, so this is like the Jerry Lewis telethon. You could send in your donation. We just call Lily's brother Lily's brother. We don't want to call his name because it's very <laughs> unfortunate. Yeah, he, um, no. What is it? He was born when he was um, 13. So it's... <laughs> he tried to hug uh, hug me and my mom just like slapped him. Slapped, slapped him. He tried to hug me. <laughs> we, we While just, you're on your period, I'm just getting all the details. Before, like I was getting told, the light, the we're light. just hang, oh. hang out at grandma's house. Perfect. And he's like, "Hi, do you want to play with me?" Mom was like, "Get away from my daughter!" Just kicking me on the face. Okay, I have a question. Was your mom extreme, or was that what all the my moms mom were was, telling their daughters? Like, don't my touch mom yourself. Don't let anyone touch you. She was average. Okay, she was average Asian mom. Other other mom would uh, spy on the daughter, 
And I did uh-huh. it. My, I did it. Um, uh, spend the after I think after school I was doing my homework with this boy at school after school. My mom uh, called me. Said, like, "Where are you?" I said, "At my grandma's house." So I wasn't there. So she called all my friends. I wasn't there. So she waved me out of school with that boy. We just uh, hold our hand with our homework, and she just slapped me in front of him. Oh. And wow. my nose was bleeding, and he's like. I'm like, why, why are you shocked? He's like, your nose bleeding. I'm like, well, you are weird. Like, my mom just loved me. Are you, I, I, I can't do with you. You are so weird. I'm like, mom, I don't want to hang out with him anymore. He's weird. She's like, I think so. So we left. <laughs> so, your nose got your, its period that day too. Yeah. <laughs> it's a whole. So your nose. Like, when my mom hit me in front of my friends and my friend got weird, I'm like, I don't think we can be friends anymore. I don't like how you react to this. I'm like, mom, I think she's not, he's not cool. She's like, I don't think so. So I'm, I hold my mom's what hand. Would you have wanted, how would you have wanted him to react? He's like, hi, hi auntie, how are you? I'm like, what's up? Here's oh, some just gauze. chill? Like nothing happened. Mm, no, that's weird. That's somebody. <laughs> so you didn't want him to like be concerned? You just wanted him to be like, that was I didn't cool. know that was, uh, yeah, that was bad. I just saw like, a, you know, she slapped me uh, because I lied. And then now say hi to my mom. And I think it's like, alarming I, that he didn't connect that that's how it happened. Yeah, he's like... I'm like, what? I'm like, they did had you my see mom. her slap me? What did you think it was a pelican that dropped down and just <laughs> yeah. punched me in the nose? Yeah, I'm like, is this <laughs> He might have special needs. That's so you- exactly. <laughs> what an <laughs> interesting story. No, but I'm you, like, why are you so feel- weird? Why don't you say hi to my mom? It's not polite. Maybe I get, we get it's married. So that's your mother-in-law in the future. You don't say hi and to And that's her. how you met her. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah. Wasn't like, you don't even want to say hi to I'm a mom. I don't want to hang out with him anymore. She's like, okay. So she held my hand, got in her car, and we left. I just look at him aside. I'm like, no, ri- no ride home for you. <laughs> when did you come to the states? Oh my god, 2009, January, 18. So, but like, how oh, old were you? I was, I was 18. I turned 19 on the fucking flight. So when you got here, were you shocked at like the openness of sexuality, of, like all that? Was I, I like- wasn't shocked because I was ugly. Nobody was fucking me. But <laughs> I did have my roommate fucking in the kitchen uh, when I walked in, and she's getting. Fucked in the kitchen. No, she, what? I'm just like, I'm just like, I'm just like, my eyes are tiny, but they can see, like, what I'm doing. Like, hello. Was she a random roommate? Just uh, like, uh, I was assigned uh, to her. Uh, so you walk like, in, the, she's the fucking in the kitchen. Like, uh, we, ha- we share one bathroom in the kitchen, and we have two rooms. And there's bathrooms like uh, in the middle. We, we shared. She's fucking in the kitchen. She locked the bathroom. I can't take a shower. She's fucking <laughs> in the shower. I mean, but it didn't happen to didn't happen to me because I I was slouching. I was hiding myself. I was so insecure. I thought I was very ugly. I hate my skin color. I was just like, uh, I was ugly. I got, I didn't uh, get any dicks at the beginning. I mean, at the beginning. <laughs> Do you get all the dicks now? I think so. I hope but so. But now it's been right no <laughs> abundance. It's like Do you uh, ever worry sometimes when you're having sex with somebody that you're like, I'm gonna be ugly now? I was <laughs> like, very afraid. Still in the back of your head. My mom never told me that if you you have sex, you get ugly. She says you touch yourself. Oh, I thought you she said ugly. or if someone else touches you. Touches you. It's like just the, okay. Oh my god. No, you're I think it's because of, well, I'm so dumb. I saw touching myself with my finger. I saw she said if somebody used your finger to touch you. I didn't know it was dick applies to. Please don't apply that. Yeah, no, I mean, I no, didn't. My not. parents did not talk about sex growing up at all. So I thought, oh now my God, I just, you just literally, I just well, can, realized that. It, what? I just realized that when my mom said somebody touching you, it included your dicks. <laughs> I saw this because my, it's my finger. I saw that their finger touching me. I didn't know it's also include them fucking me. <laughs> now it's a different game. Now I may have shame fucking now. No, actually, it's real. Actually, give me your rabbit, please. Oh my god, stop! <laughs> it's the year of the rabbit. Let's try it out. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I forgot. I was cutting you off. No, you. Saying? No, no. I was just saying that. Do you girls feel because your parents spoke to you about sex that you were more willing to be experimental in a way? Because I, I think I, I, I feel like sex is so beautiful. I like. I feel like. A, there's no shame in sex. It's uh, so intimate. I'm very vanilla. And, uh, you know, I, I'm trying to get out there. But it turns me... Here's the thing. I think that you should have a lover for sex and a lover for real life. And Because if you love me so much, mm-hmm. you're going to ba- bang my head up against the, the bedpost wall at the Marriott. Well, this That's is- love. <laughs> I thought you loved me. Now you want I, to. But I mean, this is a this is a thing that I feel like a lot of women run into and have. We we wanted to do an episode about it on our show because it's tricky when, I, I mean, it has different names, but this like Madonna and the horror complex or whatever you want to call it, where a man, for example, just views his wife as like someone he's in love with. This like 
you know, more pure woman that he wants to be the mother of his children, that kind of thing. And it's harder to like, fuck you really hard when you like, you, a lot of men can't reconcile the two. So you hear women say like, he doesn't fuck me like he did at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, cause I like love you now, you know? And you're like, yeah, but I want that. You know, it's me. really hard to yeah. sometimes find both. And yeah. that's like, a, I feel like that's a, a struggle that some people run into. Like wh where men just perceive you differently when you are in love, you're married, you have a family. Mm -hmm. They don't want to do that dirty stuff. They don't like spit in your face, you know? But then some women are over here like, wait, just fucking choke me out again. Like you used to, babe. Yeah. You know? I love that. If I, I don't found know the out answer. my mother was being choked out, I would want to be an orphan. <laughs> like, I would be so upset. I like... <laughs> right. Like, you don't want to think don't, about no. your dad choking your mom. <laughs> I heard my parents have sex once. I, I, it was <gasps> Were so... traumatized? Like, I heard like the... <laughs> oh my okay, God. So let upsetting. me ask you this, though. What is... What would you... Do you think that's better or worse than, like, moaning? Like, if... Do you want to hear slaps or do you want to hear like, uh, uh, uh. You know, my dad's yeah. a little heavy, so I was shocked that he can move at that type of velocity. <laughs> and then the next day I was going, I said something to my mom because I thought it was wrong. How old were you? I was probably like 13 or 14. Okay. You know you have children in this house. This isn't time to do, you know, reverse cowgirl. <laughs> well, I'm, <laughs> I'm sleeping in, in, in the next room. So I said to her, you know, I just want to let you know, like, I, I heard a lot of noises last night and it was really upsetting and I'm just going to leave it at that. And <laughs> I got out of the car to go get Dunkin' Donuts. I'm from New York. And she texted my dad. Nicholas said that he thought the ceiling was coming down on him last night. We're going to have to find a new spot. And she accidentally sent no, it to me. No, she didn't send it to you. Ah! She sent it to no, are you kidding me? Uh, no. I wish I was. This is why you're repressed. This, this is the moment that fucked you up for life. <laughs> no. Yeah. I'm kidding. I don't, I'm not saying that you are. But no, it, I, I completely agree you with said you. you were. You've met me twice now. That's enough to get a gauge. That experience it was so upsetting. Oh. And then were you were you on the way were you on the way to school? You're on the way to Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' yeah. Donuts. Well, like, you need can you donuts. imagine after you like go to school after you, that? Do you, do you eat more donuts? Yeah. Oh, I ate, I ate <laughs> the donuts. I ate the cashier's dick. Anything I could do to repress how I was really feeling <laughs> on the inside. But I don't know. I mean, and, our parents have sex, of course. But like, I don't want to think about my mom throwing it back. No, but I, I feel like it's crazy to me. I never, I know my parents had like a healthy sex life. My mom and I are like really close. We don't talk about like that depth. But like, I just know that they do. And... I never heard them once. Like I, and thank God, because I feel like it is traumatic. You'll never forget it. Or people that walk in on their parents fucking. Yeah, Could you even imagine? Is yeah, my mom didn't even t have any sex talk with me even today. And I go, where I'm from? She goes, you are from the dumpster. I was like, I know you took me to the dumpster, but before you take me there, and I go, where I'm from? She's like, yeah, you were in the dumpster. We took you out from there. I'm like, no, no, no. You told me you put me in there. <laughs> so what happened before that? You know, <laughs> right? No answer. Yeah, she's like. The she sighs. The she sighs like she's stork. like. <sighs> yeah, she just looked at me, just like. <sighs> I wish you had a dick, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs>